Good morning to you. It's 742. Welcome back to Good Day. Have you seen this post recently saying no ice water for dogs? Please read ASAP. Plenty of people have seen it and leading to worries after they read a blog post alleging that drinking ice water could make dogs sick. But is it true? Veterinarian Holly Noor is here to answer our questions about this. So nice to see you, nice Dr. To see Noor. You. So uh, is it a myth? It the is ice water. It yeah, is. it is. It is. Um, there's really no data behind ice water correlating to death in dogs. That post, it's been around since about 2007, and it, what it was relate, relating to and what it went on to say was that the dog died of bloat and that the ice water caused the bloat and stomach torsion. And it is something that we see in deep-chested dogs, uh, more common as they get older but there's no data that says ice water itself is the cause of the bloat. So okay. that's a myth. Well, that's a relief because my little Boston Terrier loves her some ice. <laughs> And she wants to come to the ice maker every time we I get ice. I will say one thing about ice, though, and dogs and dogs chewing on ice. Uh -huh. um, doing a lot of veterinary dentistry, it's very similar to what your dentist would tell you. Right. Don't chew on ice, it can fracture your teeth. Okay, well, that's, <laughs> that's a good tip. What about chocolate? We always hear chocolate sure. is really bad for dogs. How true is that? That one is very true. And the um, active ingredients there, theobromine and caffeine, are the big culprits in chocolate. But having said that, there's different concentrations in different kinds of chocolate. So milk chocolate doesn't contain as much theobromine as semi-sweet chocolate. Baker's chocolate is actually the most concentrated. And if you're concerned about that at all and how much chocolate your dog ate, it's going to be weight dependent, you know, how big the dog is and how much they ate. Um, ASPCA has a great um, poison control phone number that you can call. Oh, that's uh, good to know. It'll give you good information. Yeah, we had a dog eat a fast break the other day. So, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's very, very and some helpful. Of with the diet supplements and things like that, um, the caffeine can be a, a real problem, yeah. causing cardiac problems, neurologic problems, things like that. Uh, you were talking a little bit about cats, too, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we don't want to leave cats out, no. and the purring. And there's an interesting somewhat myth about the purring. Yeah, so somewhat myth is that cats only purr when they're happy, and that's not always, well, they do purr. A lot of cats do purr when they're happy, but they can also purr when they're stressed, when they're sick, when they're anxious, so a variety of different reasons that they purr. Um, but the really cool thing that we were talking about is the frequency, the sound frequency that they purr is usually between 25 and 150 hertz. And that uh, research has shown can have a healing effect in the body. So there's some reason behind um, the purring. So much we don't know yet about yeah, our animals. I know, it's really cool. Dr. Noor, you are awesome. Thank you so much oh, for thank clearing you. This that has really up. Been fun. It's, oh, it's great to meet you. We'll see you hopefully soon. Yeah, hey, yeah, Jen, thanks. isn't that interesting?